Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today we're going to have an unboxing and basically I'll tell you what happened. Uh, on Friday I had a review, or it wasn't a review, it was just a regular video on finding hidden gems. Well, I found this one and I, it was like 6,600 or something like that. And it was a nice, I mean, for 6,600, it was a great watch. I think the list on it had been 17,000. So it was brand new. So I, hmm. I, and I do this sometimes and usually I'm safe, but I did say, well, I'll offer them 4,500 and, you know, see what happens. <laughs> they accepted it. So anyway, uh, so the next thing I know, I got to pray. Oh my God, I'm in big trouble. I got to come up with 4,500 bucks. And so I had to do a number of things to do that. And this is my watch. Um, it's, <laughs> I can't say it's the most responsible thing. Well, anyway, uh, so the first thing you do on this thing, obviously, is you open it up and what do you see? A bunch of popcorn. Okay. Well, throw away all the popcorn, or not all of it, but most of it. And the next thing is there's this box inside. Let me pull it out. Uh, you can see the picture there. It's in all of the popcorn. And this this box, and put this thing down. Ah. This box is inside the other box that was full of popcorn. And so now this one, uh, open it, and sort of this one is, lets the cat out of the bag pretty much. It's a Fabergé. And it's a nice gray box. So we'll take it and see what's inside of this one. Here. Okay. Now, so open this guy up. <laughs> and there's this incredible case that this thing came in. This, by the way, like I, <laughs> I put it in my low ball bed. This is a this is a gold watch, a white gold watch. It's the way it was one of the ones I, I said, hey, this looks like a good buy, you guys. And some that's what I hate about it. I have I said, yeah, it's a good buy, you guys. And then what happens? <laughs> you know, I thought, I'll, I'll see if I can lowball it and just see what happens. Well, what happened was that I ended up with it. And it's it's a watch that I actually really wanted. So let's take a look at the watch. It's a, as you can see, it's a, it's a very nice one. This is this is the the papers that come with it. And whoops, here's the watch. You can see it better in the picture right there. Okay, uh, what this is is a Fabergé Alexi. And the Alexi, the reason I like it so much. By the way, too, I have on. A Chomet uh, dandy, uh, dandy open face. And the reason I got this watch, uh, and I'm glad I did as it turned out, is that there are two Agonor uh, Agonies gears in there, and there's a slowly turning Ferris wheel. Really an amazing watch. But it's, again, this is a uh, Chomet is very much of a luxury brand that's associated with jewelry, and so is Fabergé. Uh, but at the same time, they have some really great watches. So what about this Fabergé? Well, um, one of the things that you can see, and here's a picture of it, a little more of a close-up. I don't know if you can see it on, on this one as well, too. But it has a uh, rose engine turned, hand-turned Guilloche. And I've really been interested in Guy Lachey because um, myself and a group of people are working on a watch with Guy Lachey. And I, the only watches I have with Guy Lachey are my two FP Jarns, and from what I understand, they're stamped. But 
<laughs> that so this is my really my only uh honest to god engine turn gilo shea and like i said you can see a picture of it over there that's better okay so the next thing is i'm really interested in the movement so i turn it over and horror show <laughs> right i can't see the movement and i really 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 uh, to me, that's extremely important. Now, from what I know, this is a thing. This was a real mystery. This booklet has a has a number of different movements in there, which uh, and there are all of these movements, and I don't know which one it is. <laughs> all right, and they have they have the di di dynamiter, the thickness, uh, the semi oscillations, and the power reserve. But they don't say, well, this one goes with the Alexi, this one goes with the, you know, they don't do that. So now I got to figure out what it is. Now they're all F numbered. For example, uh, the first one is F1600. F stands for Fabergé, but as we all know that the the reference numbers that they get are the caliber numbers they get aren't always of the calibers. Now, the good thing about this from what I heard, or from what I read, I should say, these were all Frederick Piguet movements. Now, the, the thing with Frederick Piguet, it gets complicated because Frederick Piguet is associated, long associated with Blanc Pond. And at one point, Blanc Pond bought them, and then they were bought, the whole thing was bought by, I think it was called SSH, and it became Swatch. And then they became. Frederick Piguet movements became Block Pond manufacture. Okay, so now I got to find out how to go in here. And to tell you the truth, there's nothing I like less than opening up a case. This case has uh, five screws that hold the case back on. And I don't like doing that. Um, first of all, I don't have the right tools. You need a a red top, when I say red top, screwdriver. What I mean is a, a screwdriver of a certain size. So, you know, that I don't have. Huh. Well, I don't have a, what I need is uh, to really to go into it other than a red top screwdriver. is one of those special uh, loop for my glasses, and I don't have one of those, so. I guess I do. I'm going in. Okay. After that drama, I got it open. <laughs> I hate doing that. You have these little screws, and they're just these little bitty things. You can, I don't even know if you can see the head of this, how small it is. Uh, it's super small. And so the screws are super small. And I have a little dish. Uh, a little covered dish that I keep them in, and they're really hard, and then getting them back in, Jesus, you got to use a, one of those pointy tweezers, and you got to put the top back on and make sure all of the five holes align, and uh, anyway, enough of that. Here's what I found. You got this, this sort of a... <laughs> It looks like a roadkill chicken, which is a seal of a great seal of Imperial Russia, I think. Fabergé using it because the uh, Tsar used to like to buy those Fabergé, <laughs> Fabergé eggs. And so, you, you know, the, that covers a lot of what I want to find out about. Now, uh, I looked at the uh, perlas around it, uh, really very well done. So there were some things that I found out about. Now, one of them was what's called a Trovus regulator, and these were found on Frederick Piguet movements. Uh, the big thing that I was afraid of was that, you know, I get in there, and there was some inexpensive, uh, you know, <laughs> my nemesis, the ETA. Uh, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with ETAs. There really isn't. It's just when... You know, if I'm not told that's an ETA, I said, this is a Frederick Piguet, and that's what I wanted. Well, one of the things that I did is that when I was taking pictures of the back, um, you know, I had to move that stupid 
roadkill chicken around that was their symbol on their rotor. And uh, I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> it kept covering things up. So finally, I did find the, uh, the regulator, and it did have the same kind of setup that's on a regulator on the Frederick Pigay regulator or Trovis regulator, which may be on other uh, movements as well. Uh, but it didn't have what were the ETA. I said, nothing wrong with ETA. I just want to know what's there. This was apparently was a Frederick Pigay uh, movement. The other thing was this uh, this funky looking uh, thing on top of the uh, shock absorber. And uh, I think it's a KIV shock absorber. I'm not positive, which again was something that you you could find in that. Now, the final thing I was looking for was some other things that were telltale signs of this was a quality uh, movement. When it said adjusted to five positions, that allayed all of my concerns. Usually, uh, something that's uh, adjusted to five or six positions, sometimes some say, look, all you really need is five because the sixth one is simply another angle of the same five, but yeah, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. So it did say that on there and they trying to find that. The other thing I found out that it's a caliber F uh, 1857, that uh, little booklet that I had, had all of these different ones in it. And I wasn't sure which one was mine. So now I know what, what it is. It's, it's right there. The other thing, it had 28 jewels. Now, I'm not concerned about jewels per se, but they do tell you uh, the number of pivot points, and so the number of gearing and things like that. The size, uh, the size of, well, of course, well, if, as long as I knew it was 1857. On the 1857, uh, the F-1857, I knew the dimensions of the movement and so forth and everything lined up on that. But anyway, uh, so it's, I got it back together again, didn't lose any of the screws, <laughs> which is just, Hey, I, I don't know. I'm such a chicken. But then I saw, I thought, man, I tell you, if I could move that uh, roadkill chicken off of there and that rotor, that would be something. It's got those three screws, but I don't know what those three screws, what they hold on. <laughs> they hold, I could have the whole gear crane fall out in my lap if I took those off. I got to find out about it. But I'm thinking of taking off the uh, the rotor so I can get some more shots of it. Uh, I've had this uh, the uh, set the time on it the other day, and uh, I got it out to talk about it today, and it was right on time. Keeps beautiful time. It's got the heft of gold, and that's something that really feels nice. Uh, the uh, buckle is also gold. It's a tang buckle. Uh, gator strap, brand new, a really good one. Uh, so I, I tell you, I, I did find a hidden gem, I think. Let me know what you think. And um, coward that I am opening the backs of those things, I finally did it and got it back together and everything's still working. Anyway, this is an opportunity to subscribe if you like. And until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection. <music>